Hi, welcome to another AutoCAD Map Matlab. I'm Rick Chappelle, a technical consultant with CanSoft Consulting. Today I'd like to talk about topology, specifically some spatial tools that we can use to solve specific problems. The specific situation looking at today is I've got some polyline basins for some um, watershed work we're doing. We have some boundaries. And we want to prepare these to use in our sanitary sewer analysis engine that Autodesk has. Now the um, problem was that the you know the polylines get drawn um, in the desired location, and then we need to clean those up. And manually doing a lot of these cleanups can be kind of challenging. So we're going to show how we can use the cleanup tools and AutoCAD Map and the topology tools to to build polygons so that then I can prepare data that can more easily work into the sanitary sewer analysis engine. Now the way we're going to do it, we're going to start off with the map cleanup tools and then we'll use topology to create the shape files that we'll then use to import to SSA. Okay, let's get started with the software. I'm actually in Civil 3D, but all the tools I'm using today are in Map 3D. But I am solving a specific Civil 3D problem and so I'll go ahead and do it in Civil 3D here while I'm there first thing I want to do and take a look at what we've got. I've got my my surface here which is where I'm building a new roadway and so I'm doing a maybe a watershed study over here and what I've got is my my water drops that I used to define my boundaries but I want to get rid of some of that stuff so I can clean up my basins and so I'm going to go over to my prospector list and let's go ahead and set my final grade surface here to no display so I can hide it There we go. Let's go ahead. I've got a layer state created that has just the basins turned on, everything else off. Good. That's what I want to see. Nothing else. Now, let me go to my Map 3D workspace. It's called Planning and Analysis. And so here we go. These are the tools that would be in the Planning and Analysis workspace. And let me go ahead and turn on my Map workspace. There it is. So, as you can see, what I have here is I have some individual a bunch of polylines. In this case I have a closed polyline. Here I have polyline added on, another polyline added on, polyline added on, etc. Now what we want to have is kind of contiguously closed polygons with matching sides. Now I could try to trace those, but the chance of, of not quite getting it and making slivers is is pretty high, so I used polygon topology to kind of fix that and clean it up. But the first thing I'm going to do to create a topology, I've got to clean it up because, for example, right here, there needs, these need to be breaks so that I have lines that where they connect, they break. So I'm going to use the map cleanup tools to kind of help with that. So I'm going to go to the tools ribbon under the map edit panel and drawing cleanup. This is going to let me do a couple things. One, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to I can select areas, do everything, and I can select the layer that they're on, or I can individually grab them. I'll go ahead and select the sub-basin layer, because that's what I want to clean up. I'm going to get everything on there and apply the cleanup to it. And I have the option now to add and remove specific things. So I want to break the crossing objects, but I want to go ahead and get rid of little short objects, like that little bit I had over here. So I'm going to add those, and they were pretty small. Uh, my area is a pretty good size area, so I'm going to go ahead and set my tolerance to one unit. So anything under one unit, in this case one foot, is going to be deleted in the process. So I've got that set up. I'm going to set it to automatic, so it just completes it without having to go through individual pieces. Say so next. I'm going to modify my original objects, and then I'm going to finish. And it shows me my results. modified six objects, deleted two objects, created ten. So I can come through here and look at that. See every one of these lines is now an individual piece where they connect. And you'll notice if I zoom in here it got rid of that little those little overshoots there that were created. So now that I've got what should be clean edges ready for topology. Now I can create topology a couple ways. I can come over to the create and create new topology here or I can go over to my map task pane under the map explorer under topologies and create. Now we get a little workflow. 
goes through the different steps. The first thing is to define the type of topology. I'm going to do polygon topology. We also have point or node, network or line topologies. In this case we want polygons, so I give it a name, call it my basins. I'm going to come next and I get to select the links. And those are the lines between each area. So I'm going to select again. I can go through here and select everything that happens to fit on my basins layer, sub-basin layer. Next, now it's looking for nodes. Nodes would be points or point objects where there's intersections. And I don't have any, I don't really want any, so I'm just going to say select all, go next. I'm not going to create new nodes, so I'm just kind of skip through that process. Now it's looking for centroids. Centroids would be kind of a center point inside the polygon area. I don't have any currently, um, but it could be text, it could be a block with information, and I'll do both of those to, as an example to show you just a moment. But I'm just going to start with blank, and I'm going to create some new ones. I'm going to create them on my subbasin layer, and I'll just do AutoCAD points. It could be a block or whatever. I'll go through here now and give me a chance to identify errors if I have any. And I'll say next, and there we go. At this point now, I have a new point added. And if I look at my object data, let's go to the properties, scroll down, it's created this new object table called basin. It's part of the topology object table. And it tells me it's a centroid of the polygon. There's the polygon ID. It has an area, a perimeter, and the number of links or lines that surround this polygon. Now, additionally, if I look at the lines, it's going to have some additional data as well. So I come through my properties and I come down and set a topo object data as well. This is a link, it's an ID, it has a start node and an end node. In this case, it's bi directional. It also has a left and right polygon. So this topology kind of allows the system to know what's connected to the what and, and who's connected to where. So now that I have this, I have the option then to go ahead and let's create a shape file from here. So I'm going to go to my output and go to Map 3D Export. There we go, and I'm going to give it a name, call it Basins. And here's where it's important. I can get to identify this as a polygon to poly um, polygon shape file, and I can select the objects. But what I want to do is I want to select the polygon topology, basin, and it lets me take that entire set kind of contiguously and build that. It's kind of the cleanest way to generate these polygons. Now I get to pick what attributes I want to have. So I can go through here and select whatever attribute val values I have. So I have the properties of the objects in my data set. The topology data I have here, so I can go to my centroids, for example, and grab the ID area and perimeter of each of those. I can even grab the number of links as attributes. Um, I can grab block information if I had some or other object properties, different kinds of objects involved. And this is where I can set what the attributes are going to be in my shapefile. So if I had a piece of text, I can get the value of the text or the block attributes this way. In this case, I'll say OK. There we go. There's the output fields. I can change the names of these if I want to. Um, I think I'm okay with the way this is going to be. And um, I can go through with options. Treat closed polylines as polygons. I don't have to do that because I'm using topologies. But if I had closed polylines, I could use that this way. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And it's created a polygons. Now I don't see those because they're not in my drawing. So let me go ahead to my display manager and let's add those shape files to see what they look like. So I'll connect to data, tell it that I want to grab a shape file, and go find my shape file, basins file that I created, connect, add to my map, let me do a quick zoom extends to go grab it, zoom extends. And there's my shape files. I could query each one of these and look at it. Let's go to the properties. 
It's a map feature, and there's the attributes that I grabbed from there. Turn off, and we can see my ploy lines underneath there. So at this point, I can take the shape file now and import that into my SSA. Let me show you really quickly what happens when I create the basins with text or with plugin attributes. So here I've gone back to just before I created my topology. In this case, I have a piece of text that I want to work with. Okay, just a piece of text. So I go through the polygon process the same way. Create topology. This one's with TX text. Let's get it out of Grab all the layer items. In this case with the centroids, let me grab those centroids. And I'll just grab, it's going to recognize the text. And there it's created those. And if I actually go to my text, you'll notice my text gets the attributes on there as well. Then, of course, when I cr um, create a shape file, be the same process, except that now when I come to my data, I can go through here, select the attributes, and I can get some of that information as well, ID area. I can go through the text and get the text value as well. For example, the actual contents of the text. And that becomes part of my and create the shape file that way. Likewise, I can use blocks. So here I've gone back just before I created the topology again. Now I have some blocks. So if I look at each one of these, what I have is it's a block reference and I've got a basin number and a basin ID. So I want to capture those values as part of my shape file. So I go through and I'm going to create my topology the same way that I have done in the past. select all of my links, kind of ignore the nodes. Let me go ahead and grab, I can get a block name, so I can go through all of my blocks and grab the, the basin, or I could just select them as well. Let's go ahead and select them manually. And it filters out and grabs the ones I needed. Create new ones on here if I want to. I'll just go ahead and take it. Say finish. Create the poly Gun topology here. Now, if I check my block properties, there's the topo table right on there. So, otherwise, that's the same. I can go through now and do my map export and grab my polygon, set this to basins with block. Now, come through and set my attributes. You'll notice now I have block attributes available to me, and I can pick those as part of that process. And I can mix and match. Let's go ahead and get my area and perimeter from my centroid. And those will be my now my um, attribute names. Say OK. There we go. Again, I can add these to my data set. Let's go based on the block. Do a zoom extents. And now if I check the attributes of these, then I get my base number or my base ID. So there we have. These are now ready to import into the SSA tool as basins. Thank you.